Hi, my name is Wendy Peel with Texas Instruments and today I'll be going over an introduction to gas laws using the science inspired lesson titled Hot Molecules. This lesson and many more are available for free at www.scienceinspired.com. You can use these lessons with the TI Inspire CX graphing calculator, TI Inspire iPad app, or TI Inspire CX premium teacher software. With each of the lessons that you'll find on the Science Inspired website, um, each activity will have different pages that you will go between, and you can find those pages at the top left of your screen, and you just click on each page with your cursor or the touchpad on your Inspire to go between pages, or you can click on Control and then the right arrow. Within each document, there's going to be several questions. Um, sometimes there'll be some simulations that you will change some variables and make some things happen and then answer some questions based on what you did when you made those changes. The first question we come to in this activity is what theory governs the motion of molecules in a gas? The correct answer to this is going to be the kinetic molecular theory and there will be several other questions associated with this activity that will give us the full meaning of the kinetic molecular theory um, which basically this theory is going to explain the movement of gases and the motion of ideal gases um, it's also going to help us kind of understand why do we need to understand what's happening to these molecules um, as the temperature is increasing or decreasing. Moving on to the next page, we find another property of the kinetic molecular theory that states that gas particles are considered to have negligible attraction or repulsion for other gas molecules. Basically meaning as those molecules are moving around constantly, they're kind of bumping into each other, but they don't, they don't have any kind of attraction or repulsion. They're just kind of moving around. Okay, and then the next page we go to is another part of the theory, is that particles of gas, and I kind of mentioned it before, they're in constant random motion. They're just constantly moving around, and like we mentioned previously, there's no attraction or repulsion associated with those molecules. Now that we've gone over a few of the properties of the kinetic molecular theory, um, let's do a little prediction to see what's going to happen when we introduce some of the variables associated with the system that we're working with for this particular activity. Um, with this one, we're going to assume that we're working with some molecules that are in a closed container, meaning it's going to be a constant volume, and we want to know what do you think is going to happen to the pressure of a gas as we increase the temperature, meaning what is going to happen to those molecules when those, uh, mole the temperature rises, what are the molecules going to do if they're in a constant random motion? And the correct answer to this is that it is going to increase the pressure in our system. Then when we go to the next page, what do you think is going to happen to the motion of the particles of gas in that closed system as you increase that temperature? So when you think about this, you have the molecules that are moving around. And think about, um, let me give an example here. If you and your classmates are in your classroom, and you're on a tile, standing on a tile floor with no shoes on and the floor starts heating up. You're probably going to start jumping around and moving around trying to keep your feet off of the floor, right? Well, based on that, if everybody in the class is doing the same thing, at some point you're going to start bumping into each other. So what do you think that's actually going to do to the motion of the particles? Are you going to speed up that motion trying to keep from your feet from touching the floor? Or are you going to decrease that motion? And I hope you understand that the correct answer to that is that your particles will speed up. Okay, let's see if we can get a visual so you can kind of understand what we've covered so far and the example that I just gave you um, just now. Um, if you're following along on the software um, or uh, with your handheld, um, the next page is going to give you some instructions of what you're going to do on a simulation on the next page. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to that next page so we can get to that simulation so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so this one, if you'll notice on the side here, we've got our temperature values right here, and I'm kind of right in the middle here um, of us heating up the temperature, and you'll notice these molecules are moving around, okay? This right here is going to kind of give us an idea of uh, when the temperature is actually increased or decreased, and this is not an automatic thing that happens, so we kind of have to wait a few seconds each time we make a change for it, uh, the gauge to actually get to where the temperature is that we've changed to. So based on this, just kind of looking at it before we get into some of the questions, you notice that there's a lot of little red um, dots there. Some are large, some are small, some are medium, 
Um, I see a purple one kind of moving around a little bit, but let's see if we've got some questions um, for some things for us to do. But what you're going to do is I'm going to grab this particular um, slider right here and I'm gonna move it up and down, okay? And I'll give it just a second and you'll notice that there's maybe a little bit more moving around there once we let it all start happening and we'll have some questions associated with it or I can change it all the way down. But if you'll notice this gauge has not changed yet and that's one of the hints that it gave us on the previous page that we need to give it a little bit of time for the gauge to actually start moving on this particular simulation. Um, and with this one, you'll notice that there's um, some blue in, that's been introduced here. Okay, so we've got a few different little molecules here and we'll, we'll discuss that on the following pages with some um, questions. We will be referring back to this particular page um, when we're answering the questions as well, okay? The first question associated with our simulation is if we increase the temperature to 100 Kelvin, the color of most of the molecules changes to what? So let's go back to that page and to do that you can do control left or click on the page itself at the top. Um, right now I've got this down at a temperature of 10 Kelvin so I'm going to increase that to 100. You can do it slowly to get up to 100 and kind of observe what's happening each time or you can take that all the way up to the 100 Kelvin and see what's happening. So based on this, the majority of the molecules moving around tend to be the color red. Okay, so we'll select red. All right, the next question is the color change observed in th question 3.1 indicates that the molecules have what kind of average kinetic energy at that higher temperature? Is it going to be zero energy, average energy, increase, decrease, or negative energy? Well, based on that, when we go back to the simulation, if you look at the way those molecules are moving right now, those are moving a whole lot faster than what they were when we had the temperature down at a lower value. So the correct answer to that should be increased average kinetic energy at the higher temperature. And that goes back to the example that I gave you that the higher the temperature, the higher that floor was getting when you were standing on it, the more you're going to be jumping up and moving up and down to keep your feet from touching that floor uh, any more than it has to. Okay. So moving on to question 3.3, it's asking as the temperature of the gas decreases, what is slowly happening to the pressure? So we're decreasing the temperature of the gas, what's happening to the pressure itself? Now I'm going to use a feature of the software uh, so that I can quickly get back to my simulation instead of going back through all the pages. Um, and by doing that in the software, I'm going to click on this little um, icon right here. If you'll notice me moving my cursor here. And that's going to just give me all of my pages kind of like in a PowerPoint format that I can um, look at. If you are actually on a handheld, you can do control and then the up arrow right here and it will do the same thing and it will give you all of your pages. So now I'm going to go back up here and I can quickly get to this. Okay. Now the question is asking, okay, as we are slowly decreasing our temperature, okay, what is slowly happening to the pressure? So keep in mind with this theory, when you have a closed system here, and as those molecules are bumping into each other, they're creating more and more energy, okay? We saw that happening as we increased the temperature, the molecules were moving around a whole lot more, bumping into each other, and then they're bumping off the sides of the container. Well, that means it's increasing the pressure that's on that system. So if when I increase the temperature, my pressure was increasing, but now I'm decreasing the temperature, and as I decrease it, they're not quite moving around as fast, which means they're not bumping into each other as often, which in turn means they're not bumping into the sides of the container, so therefore our pressure should be, the correct answer for this, I'm going to go back here, it should be as the temperature of the gas decreases, what is slowly happening to your pressure? it is going to decrease as well. So based on that, I just made the comment that as we increase the temperature, the pressure increased, and as I decrease the temperature, the pressure decreased. Okay, so think about that in a mathematical relationship there, what that means, okay? All right, and the next question is, at a temperature of zero Kelvin, all of the particles are and it's asking what color those are. So we'll go back up to my simulation here 
and let's decrease that all the way down and we'll give it just a minute to adjust itself based on the meter because we can obviously move that slider a lot faster than the simulation can catch up so we'll give it just a second to catch up here now you'll notice at the higher temperatures we answered the question earlier that the majority of the particles were red now that we've decreased it down to zero Kelvin you'll notice that the majority of the particles have now become blue and there are different sizes just like there were before so the correct answer for that is blue now the next question is asking when you're observing these particular molecules moving around in that system um, from 3.4 the kinetic energy of the particles at zero Kelvin which we shouldn't really have to go back to the simulation every time but we'll go ahead and go back since we uh, actually moved that down to zero from the previous question but looking at that you see that they're all kind of down here not really doing a whole lot uh, when you're at that zero Kelvin so based on that from that observation if we had the uh, temperature at zero Kelvin then the energy kinetic energy of those particles would be at a theoretical minimum okay not really saying it's non-existent um, some of you may be wondering why you're saying it's non-existent because in our simulation it looks like there's no energy happening whatsoever but there's molecules moving around at some point um, the least little bit that it's moving around so we cannot typically say that it is non-existent um, because in theory there could be a tiny bit of movement of some uh, mar particles at some point okay all right going on to page 3.6 when the molecules hit the walls of the container, and some of this I've kind of already um, spoken about and mentioned, uh, so these questions, some of these are re really just kind of trying to uh, reiterate the, the concept so that you're getting that understanding. But when the molecules hit the walls of the container, well, we know they don't stick to the walls because we saw them continuously moving around. It didn't look like they were breaking into pieces, and it didn't look like it was passing through the wall of that container. So the correct answer for this would obviously be they would bounce off of the walls, and we did see that happening. All right, moving on to page 3.7. Okay, if we observe the size of the molecules in the simulation, which would best describe the composition of the gas in the container? Meaning, what is the gas made up of? All right, and this particular one is asking how many substances? Okay, so let's go back to the simulation so we can actually see that. So right now it looks like there's just one okay if we go all the way up to 100 then what we saw earlier is we're only going to see those red particles so let's kind of go to that midpoint and see if we can get some of the high and the low a little mix of it so let's give it just a second for that meter to catch up there so right now i'm seeing blue i'm seeing that pinkish purple color i'm seeing red Okay, so so far we have three. And based on the next question, okay, I want you to kind of look at the change in the, uh, in the color because the next question, I'm gonna go ahead and, um, and read it so since we're on the simulation, we can look at it. Um, it's telling me to move the slider one third of the way towards 100 degrees. Sometimes when molecules collide with each other, there's a color change for one or both molecules and explain the meaning of this observation in terms of energy okay so we want to look at the uh, terms of energy but right now I'm kind of seeing purple I see some pink every now and then that's uh, a little bit lighter than the purple I'm seeing red okay and I'm seeing some blue in there so that's four different colors there so that's four substances so that's going to answer our question of how many substances are in this system here and then that last question I mentioned said for us to move about a third of the way towards 100 degrees okay so we'll move it about right there and let it get to where it's evened out on our meter down there and it's asking us to kind of take a look and see when some of these molecules are colliding with each other do you see any of them changing colors when they bump into each other okay it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly because of the uh, at the rate that they're moving but I'm hoping that you did notice that there are some that when they bump into each other that one of them is actually changing color one or the other or both are actually changing colors 
Okay, I'll leave it there just for a second for you to take a look. And basically what that means is, is that when they're bumping into each other, each one has its own amount of energy that it's bumping into the other with. Um, when they're changing colors, one of them is absorbing more energy from the other. So one may be getting more energy from the one it bumped into, meaning its um, color may change and the size of it may change because now it's got more energy associated with it because it absorbs some of that energy. So I hope that makes sense a little bit. So now when we go back to the actual questions that we were just discussing, um, that first one was asking how many substances um, made up the particular gas that was in this situation. And as I mentioned, we saw some blue, some red, some purple, and some pink. So the correct answer to this would be four substances. All right, and then the next page, uh, the one we just discussed, uh, when they collide with each other, the color change uh, for one or both molecules, and we decided that that was based on um, a difference in the change of energy when they uh, bump into each other, that one molecule could possibly absorb the energy from another. All right, and then our last question here for this particular activity is an actual um, real-world application. Um, some of you may or may not have seen this particular um, example, whether it was on TV or in real life. But if you have an aerosol can, meaning like a hairspray or paint can or things like that, um, why do those aerosol cans have a warning that the container may explode if heated? I'm hoping that this particular activity would help you understand that. Um, those aerosol cans are considered a closed container, obviously. Um, and so as it gets heated, whether it's you know in a fire or whatever, you see some explosions on some of these TV shows when um, things are in homes or whatever. Um, but as the temperature increases, those molecules inside that aerosol can are just constantly heating up and moving around. You saw when we increased that to 100 Kelvin that those molecules were just moving around more and more and more, and they were bumping into each other and creating those collisions on the sides of that container to the point where eventually it's going to make that aerosol can actually explode. Okay? So I hope this helped you a little bit on um, an introduction to gas laws when you're talking about... Um, the pressure and the temp changing temperature in a particular system that you're working with. Don't forget, this lesson as well as many other science lessons can be found at www.scienceinspired.com.